It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tally here. For this video, I will be responding to a clip of a person reading a book out loud on how white kids apparently have white privilege. And so, without further hesitation, let us begin. Hi, I'm Sydney, and today I'm going to be reading a kid's book about white privilege by Ben Sand. This kid's book series is my all-time favorite series because it's a great way to start a conversation about topics such as white privilege, as kids are never too young to start learning about things like this, and it's so important to be educated about topics like white privilege. The first thing I immediately noticed for this video is that the person who is reading the book out loud has both the Black Lives Matter flag as well as the LGBT flag together in her setting, which is kind of strange to me because Black Lives Matter seems to be in some sort of cahoots against the LGBT community. And why exactly did I say that? Well, not so long ago in Canada, of course, Black Lives Matter activists wanted to have their own personal celebration in front of those who wanted to celebrate Pride, not to mention the fact, of course, that Black Lives Matter openly endorsed the Cuban government. And as everybody knows, the Cuban government is pretty much infamous for their homophobia and racism against its own people. So yeah, I don't think necessarily that putting the gay flag and the Black Lives Matter flag together is a really smart idea. Intro. It's time white parents talk to white kids about race. To be a child in the world today is to be confronted with the complexities of race, but we still have a long way to go when it comes to this conversation, and we've neglected the topic of privilege for too long. So I decided to write this book with the hope that white children growing up today will see their privilege and use it for good. Let's be the parents that decide not to perpetuate the myth that all children start from the same spot. Instead, let's empower our children with the knowledge to build a new space together. It's a various curious quotation that we should not perpetuate the myth that everybody starts from the same spot, but this whole entire book is basically talking about white privilege which basically presume that every single last white person starts from the same spot and has more privilege than others based entirely off of their skin color. Now, of course, it's true that not everybody starts from the same spot. There are different classes of people depending on their income. There's like the poor class, the rich class, and of course, the medium class. And every single racial group in the United States and elsewhere in the world fit in any of those categories. Now, is it true that there are some minorities that are more affected than others? Sure, that's true. It's also really true, of course, that there are also various people who also experience different things. By saying that people have it good in life just because they happen to be white kind of perpetuates this sort of idea that basically everyone must be good, does not have some sort of hardships because they're white. And that, to me, does not sound like a good, honest argument. Hi, my name is Ben, and this is my book about white privilege. White privilege? What's that? Well, first I have to explain to you what I mean by white. I want you to look at the color of your skin. What color is it? When I look at my arm, it's kind of a pinkish reddish beige like the color of this page. But when people talk about what color I am, they would say white. But why? If white is actually the color of this page and my skin looks different, then what does it mean that I'm white? It's a good thing that we have a dictionary to help up with definition. Now, according to Merriam-Webster, being white is, of course, is to relate to a population of various groups of having light pigmentation of the skin. The meaning of white, as it relates to population groups, has historically been fluid with people of particular ancestries being included for a time before being included and vice versa. The category also functions as a grouping in which people are not designated as belonging to some other category as place. Civic paramedics, however, are set as in the United States 2020 census as stipulates that the category of white includes all individuals who identify with more or one nationality or ethnic groups originating in Europe, the Middle East, or in North Africa. Although the word white is, of course, not literal for some white people, the word is being used as some sort of descriptor to, you know, describe how a person look. That's the closest word that we could possibly use 
for the description of white people or Caucasians, right? Now, for the case of black too, I'm not literally, literally, literally black, you know, like, you know, the dark, dark color, right? I'm more brown than black, but it's been evolving our language because people refer to other people that way. And so, I think these words are used as descriptors as not necessarily being literal, but just as descriptors for this whole entire case. Okay, now we need to talk about the other word, privilege. Privilege is when someone has an advantage that they haven't earned. Like when your classmate is always chosen to be team captain just because their mom is the coach. Or when you're racing a friend, but they get a head start. That is not a good definition of privilege. A privilege is defined as a special right, advantage, or immunity granted of available only to a particular person or group. A good example of privilege is driving a car. For example, you need to go to driving school, you have to take a test to, you know, drive the car, and then finally, you get your license to drive a car, drive a truck, drive a bus, or whatever kind of automobile. It's the same thing for um, different classes of people, because the poor class are at a disadvantage because they, of course, don't earn as much money in comparison to the middle class and the rich class. And so, these are good examples of privilege. But what exactly is privilege for white people? Because in our laws, there's nothing that actually, of course, benefit white people to have certain positions just because they happen to be white. And if you're gonna say police brutality, again, police brutality happens to all people and not just happens to, you know, black people. And also the other cases too, about having CEOs, again, there are a larger population in the United States with white people in comparison to, of course, like these other minorities. And so obviously the majority population are probably going to get more chances to, you know, go into those sort of companies. And of course, the idea of meritocracy, these probably hire people because they are more qualified for that position. So then, what is white privilege? Oh yes, please tell us. Tell us these sort of examples on ways white people have a good and benefit from white privilege. So, what are some of those advantages? Sometimes they're small. And sometimes they're really big. Like, the privilege of always seeing people who look like you in books and movies. That might seem like no big deal, but imagine if no one looked like you in your favorite movie. Wouldn't that make you feel left out or sad? This is such a stupid argument because there are movies out there that do in fact feature minorities in the United States. There's entire channels that's dedicated to black content like BET that has exclusively black actors. There's also movies that feature Hispanics. And so there are like movies that are catered towards different ethnicity in the United States. And to say that there's only white people that are only in movies is like a Disneyland. Like it's not real. Like you really have to be blind to say that there is no such thing as other minorities that are featured in movies. Or it can be in the people who are usually in charge, like teachers, your parents' boss, and presidents. Those people are usually white. While it's true that the vast majority of presidents happen to be white, there was one black president that ran and actually won the election two times in a row. His name was Barack Obama. Now, as far as like your boss and your teachers, well, it's kind of, you know, reductionist to say that there's only white teachers and that there's only white bosses. Depending on the demographics in which you live in the United States, there are some areas that have more white people in comparison to other places. And there are some places that have more minorities in comparison to white people. And so in those kind of urban areas, There'll probably be like more black bosses or more Hispanic bosses or whatever. And the same thing applies for teachers. Again, it's so reductionist to just say that it's only white teachers, only white bosses, when in reality, everybody, no matter their background, and these sort of urban neighborhoods are being higher based entirely off their meritocracy. This is probably something you've never really thought about. That's okay. But don't you often wonder why those people are often white and not another color? I find this idea to be really toxic to teach kids that there must be something inherently wrong in the United States 
just because we have a lack of representation, as they put it, I want to push this sort of idea of equity across the whole entire nation, which basically another word is saying equality of outcomes. Because with equality of outcomes, what you'll get is, of course, people being hired solely on quotas based entirely on their skin color, based entirely on their race. And so, just because there happen to be, of course, like, you know, less minorities in power, does not necessarily mean that there are systems in place that prevents them from, you know, getting into office. It's also, you know, determined by personal choices because not every single minority group have the sort of same sort of interests like other groups. It's the same case for women and men because men and women on average have different interests and so they tend to gravitate towards different things. Similarly, there are some collectives and these sort of racial groups that have different interests in comparison to other people. It's not that, of course, the system is preventing them from being whatever they want to. It just so happens to be their own personal choice and their own personal decisions on why there are, of course, less people in certain fields in comparison to others. White privilege could also be in things you don't have to worry about that people of color do. Like... Feeling unsafe when you walk past a police officer. There are literally stories out there of white people who are being attacked by police and are subject of police brutality. But surely we don't even get that in the narrative, right? Having people assume you're bad at something because of your skin color. <laughs> there are literally books out there that are targeting white people to tell them that they're bad solely because they're white. Studies like, you know, whiteness are like, you know, parasites and that basically this one professor who wanted to kill white people because she just hated white people so much in a video essay. And of course, the various copies of like, you know, these anti-racist books and white fragility and of course that children's book that basically say that white people are like the devil. Yes, white people nowadays, thanks to this sort of ideology, are facing this sort of stuff now on a daily basis. Easily finding a band-aid that matches your skin tone. Or people always asking you where you're really from. You cannot possibly be serious. White people have white privilege because there are white bandies out. <laughs> white bandies is proof of white privilege. <laughs> Look, I don't care what color is a freaking band-aid. There are some things, of course, in life that I don't necessarily give a shit about. I don't give a shit about the color of a band-aid. All I'm really concerned about is if a band-aid actually works or not when I get a cut. And so, this is like so incredibly, oh my god. Now, as far as the question about like where you're from, it happens pretty much anywhere. If you happen to be like a foreigner and you visit like a foreign land, Usually people ask you out of, you know, curiosity where you're from. So it's not necessarily if you're white or if you're black, visiting foreign lands, like people always ask you like where you're from to get to know you, to, you know, chat with you and have conversations. I don't think necessarily, of course, this is an example of white privilege because white people also get asked that questions when they visit other countries. These are just some of the ways that white privilege can show up without anybody noticing. In fact, part of having white privilege can mean that you don't even have, even know you have it. This idea that, of course, somebody has white privilege and they don't even know it sounds very vaguely similar to the idea of original sin. Because apparently, you know, everybody has sin, but they don't really know it. And so it seems like this sort of language is very, like, you know, religious in nature. The thing about white privilege is that you don't have to think about being white. This was also true of me. As a kid, I never thought about being white. I never thought that I had extra privileges. But because of my white privilege, strangers smiled at me when I walked down the street. I would get invited to more places and parties. I felt safe when out and about. I had more opportunities. People didn't look down on me. And I had a better shot at success. I had all these advantages even though I grew up without a dad, no money, and never really knew what tomorrow would look like. I really hate this part. 
I hate how it somehow suggests that black kids and minorities never once get hello from anybody if they cross the street. I also hate the fact that it's also suggesting that black people are less likely to be not successful because they happen to be a certain skin color. And that is simply not true. That is simply not true. We see these sort of black celebrities like Oprah or Will Smith or Jada Pekka Smith, whoever, who are rich and of course despite them being black, they still made it in life becoming millionaires. We have of course again the black president of the United States who took office even though he was black. We have our black Supreme Court Justice and all of these other successful black people who made it in life through hard work and determination. The sitter and also state that somehow he cannot, that black people cannot necessarily have a success in life, that people cannot go on the street saying hello to black people, that's like, you know, really, really bad messaging out there. It, perpet it perpetuates the idea that black people are victims and that white people are not victims. And that to me is a divisive message. Having white privilege doesn't mean that everything about my life is perfect or better than a person of color. It means that I had a head start. I didn't earn that head start. I didn't ask for that head start, but I had a head start because I was white. But here's the thing. I could feel guilty about my white privilege, which I did for a while, but what good would that do? Who would that help? It doesn't make me a bad person to have white privilege, but I can't pretend that it doesn't exist. So instead of feeling guilty, I realized I needed to see it. It was up to me to accept that my privilege was there and to learn more about it and how it affects people around me, especially people of color. Use it for good. I also learned that I could use my privilege for good. You can too. Commit to listening to people of color, learning from them, and helping others without your privilege, which sometimes means stepping back and letting them take the lead. Give it up. Since I didn't earn my privilege, it's not really mine, but I have the power to give it up. When it puts me at the front of the line, when it gets in the way of somebody else, or when it can lift someone up. This whole entire part just reads like an entire recruitment manual. You know how people try to convert your kids to the religion because they want to save their souls? Well, this is no different. You see, you're white, you need to acknowledge your privilege as a kid, and so therefore, you must be some sort of first soldier to, of course, you know, fight for the cause of social justice. Like, to me, this is no different than this sort of Jesus camp idea. That somehow, these kids need to be activists as really, really young to, you know, fight for the good cause. This is like indoctrination. This is political indoctrination if they were to apply this book to schools. And not just, you know, at school level, but also on an individual basis. Because you're making kids become, you know, the voice, the mouthpiece of your own personal political ideology. But I don't necessarily think, of course, that kids should be mouthpieces for, like, political ideologies. We see it all the time where basically, like, kids are forced to say that God hate facts and so on. And so, I don't necessarily think that using a political ideology or religious idea and forcing something to the kids is a really good idea. In fact, it's a form of indoctrination. It's not always clear how to do this, but it's important to try. When we do these things, we should not expect an award for it. It's just the right thing to do. Seeing your privilege isn't easy. It took me a long time. Using it for good and giving it up is even harder. But if you're white and you're reading this book, I just wanna say, Understanding and acknowledging your white privilege is not just important. It is your responsibility. Have the courage to ask the question, what privileges do I have because I'm white? Then have even more courage to find out the answers. The end. If your definition of having privilege, like you said earlier, is a lack of black presidents, is having less, of course, minority teachers, is of course having more people in government and whatever. I'm sorry, white people do not have privilege. I'm sorry, if that was your definition of white privilege, there is no such thing as white privilege. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.
It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.